What is up everyone, Movie Man back again with the good old fashioned the Blu-ray and 4K update. Got a nice little stack here, so let's just get straight into it. You know how these videos work. Now the first one I've got here is actually a DVD. Now I don't really collect DVDs, but my dad actually gave me this. He's had it a while now. And it's a film I've always wanted to see. And you can't get it on Blu-ray, so... You know, if you could have got it on Blu-ray, I would have bought it by now. And that is A Room for Romeo Brass. Now, this is by the director Shane Meadows, who made This Is England and Dead Man's Shoes. And I've heard this is a really underrated film by him. It doesn't get appreciated enough because them two are the standout films. But I've heard this is really, really good from everyone who's seen it, including me dad. And every time he recommends a film, it's definitely worth a watch. He doesn't do it too many times, but when he does, you know, it's usually worth checking out. Because my dad really just come out with some mad recommendations in the past. Um, He's the one who actually put me on Dead Man's Shoes and the movie Frailty, which I love. So I'm definitely going to give this a go. Now, I've heard this is, I think it's the Milky character from This Is England. The guy who plays him is in this. And Paddy Considine, I believe, uh, maybe in this. And he's a bit of a bad man or something. And he's sort of pushing him around. That's kind of all I know. Uh, but looking forward to checking this out. Shane Meadows is a great director. Everything I've seen by him, I've loved. So I can't wait to check this one out. But hopefully they, I like it and they bring it out on the Blu-ray uh, format at some point. But I won't hold my breath. Now, now we're just going to get into the 4Ks here. A few little deals on this month. And the first one I got was Eternals. Now this was in a deal in HMV for 2 for 24, I think. And this is obviously an MCU film. Now I, I'm on a bit of an island here. But I really enjoyed this film at the cinema. I don't get the hate. Um, a lot of people saying it was a little bit messy and it was just a you know thrown together. It should have been a TV series, but I don't agree with that at all. I actually thought it was a very well constructed film. Each character was they had a little screen time, but what they had it, it you know made them a little bit interesting and stuff. I think it worked really well. I thought it was a well directed film from Chloe Zhao. I just don't get the hate. It's one of my favorite movies from Phase Four. <laughs> I know I'm on a bit of an island there, but I'm just telling you my thoughts. I don't know if it's because a, a lot of people think it's popular to hate on the MCU or whatever. Maybe they just generally didn't like it, and that's fair enough. We are all different, aren't we? Uh, but I really enjoyed this at the cinema. I think I give it like an 8 out of 10 in my review. Glad to own it. I, it's one of them. I'll always buy MCU films. I, you usually don't get them day one, but I like to own them all in the end eventually. Still got to get Thor, Love and Thunder and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse and Madness added to the collection. Next up is another 4K and that is another 2021 film and this is Dune. I didn't get the slipcover with this but it doesn't really bother me too much. I mean if I start searching for slipcovers everywhere I probably won't collect anything because it would drive me insane. <laughs> so yeah, I've made a little pact with myself not to be bothered about slipcovers. If it comes with one, good bonus. But this is Dune. Now, I was a little bit let down with this film last year because I was expecting just great things with the cast and the director. And maybe that was me going in with too much expectation. But I really want to rewatch this again, especially with Dune Part 2 coming out next year. And I think the best way to watch this would be on 4K, of course. Um, I didn't dislike the movie or anything. I just thought it would give me a little bit more there. And by the end of the film, I was like, eh what was all that about but i understand this is a very very hard novel to adapt and put on screen as best as you can but it's a very hard task for i'm gonna butcher his name here again denny villanue i'm just gonna say that <laughs> it must be a, a really hard task to adapt this novel i read it's really you know it's very it's, it's got all sorts of lore and stuff in the world but i uh, loved all the cast in this thought there was great performances and Hopefully, on a rewatch, I'll, I'll, I'll warm to this film a little bit more. I'm definitely going to watch it before the second one comes out anyway. Um, so that is June. Next up is one of my favourite films from 2021. Yes, I just realised these last three films are 2021 releases. And that is Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now, one thing that does bother me about the artwork here, not having a slip cover, is not, it's not that, it's the artwork. <laughs> I mean, who come up with that cover, man? It's one of the best scenes in the film, but it looks terrible as artwork. All the things they could have done, and they come out with this. But anyway, yeah, I thought this was a really good 
some people will say third instalment or fourth instalment, whatever you want to call it, to the Ghostbusters franchise. Um, thought they done really well to like reinvent the Ghostbusters characters, if you like. Not reinvent them, but you know, bring them back in a different way with all these young kids taking the mantle and the emotional ending all tied together really, really well. And it, more than anything, it was just a fun film. And I thought it was a good idea to go back, uh, to come away from New York City and like this countryside location uh, with a small town there. That all really worked well. And I'm looking forward to the next one after this. I think they're going back to New York. Uh, I think it's coming out next December. So I'm really looking forward to that. But I'm, and, and I'm going to do a rewatch as well before then. Really enjoyed this one. I think I had it in like my top 15 last year. So, yeah, definitely a worthy, worth the wait, if you like, you know, for Ghostbusters fans. Now, getting on to a couple of box sets now. I know I've had this on my list for a long time because it is one of my favourite TV shows ever. I grew up with this. I laughed my ass off at it. And that is the box set of Friends. That's a really, really big box set, this. I didn't expect it to be like that. Uh, you got, like, two cases in there and a bonus disc with a buckler and everything it's all in there so it's a really really sturdy box um yeah I, i've seen a lot of hate for this show lately on social media like a lot of people seem to think like it's not even funny it's dated it's silly it's got unlikable characters and i couldn't disagree with all of that in any other way this is one of the most perfect tv shows ever in my opinion the amount of times i've laughed my ass off at some of the scenes in there it's just one of the funniest things i've ever seen uh, all the characters just work so well on screen together you can't get better chemistry between six characters uh just love the show to bits now i don't know if i'll ever go to this box set in the near future but it's something i want to own in my collection you've got to have your favorite tv shows i think and this is in my top 10 of all time i've actually done a top 10 tv shows ever so i'll leave the link to that video if you want to check it out but this was in it um so really really glad to own this uh yeah maybe maybe i'll i'll go through it all again one day in a few years but uh very very happy to own friends i've been after that one for a while i got a great price in cex at 22 pounds which isn't too bad so that is friends the box set next up is another box set now this is going for really cheap online uh i think it was 80 quid on amazon and a lot of people were posting up saying this ebay store has got it for 20 pounds so i pounced on it and that is the before trilogy on criterion now i don't own too many criterions but i've heard this is one of the best trilogies ever made from Richard Linklater. I watched one of his films on Netflix this year called Apollo 13 and a half. I thought it was really, really good. So that did push me again a little bit towards picking this up, but the, I couldn't say no at that price. I've heard nothing but great things about these films. A lot of people say the first is the best and some other people say the third is the best. So a lot of mixed opinions there. No one really gravitates towards one of these films. It's a mixture of what they like the best. And I, it, it's not really my genre, I'm not gonna lie, but when i'm getting older now i'll probably watch anything there's not an i'll dismiss um apart from twilight probably because i just can't be bothered watching the films at all i'll probably give these uh, i'm willing to give these a go especially if they're very very well acclaimed by viewers and critics and stuff it's gonna make me have a little go of them so yeah i'm kind of looking forward to these now next this year i have watched so many new releases I think I'm on 115 or something from 2022. But next year, I think I'm going to dial that down a little bit and start watching a few more classics and stuff instead, whilst watching a lot of 2022 films that I want to see, not ones that I have no interest in, like fucking senior year, which I watched this year. So next year, I'm going to be delving into a lot more films like this. You know, I've got Singing in the Rain, Citizen Kane, this which is very well you know received stuff like that i'm going to get into next year so you hear me talk about this probably next year at some point in my end of month vlog where i talk about all the films i've watched and a lot of films like that you know that i've had in my blu-ray collection is building up now and i want to get some of them watched and next up is a two for 15 deal and this is on the indicator label in hmv and these are two films that i've really wanted to own for quite a long time but i'll start with the first one and that is John Carpenter's Vampires. Now, I've never actually seen this film. John Carpenter, he's a bit of a hit and miss director for me. I mean, I don't love him as much as everyone else, but he is a great director. There's no doubt about it. Some of his films, though, don't quite click with me as, 
like they do with a lot of other people but i've heard this is a really really fun film uh i haven't seen a good vampire film in a while i don't think and i'm really looking forward to checking this one out i think it'll be fun i think it's early 2000s late 90s or 1998 so it's around that time when i watched a lot of movies so i could probably relate to this even if it feels dated uh but a few people messaged me when i put this on instagram and said it's a really fun film so looking forward to it yeah glad to own that one the john carpenter movie to tick off my list and again we have another john carpenter movie and this is ghost of mars which i have seen i think i own this on dvd back in the day it was one of the first dvds i owned and it's not a great movie but it's definitely a watchable one um just i suppose you have to like i said grow up in that little era of the 90s there or oh, 2001 it is early 2000s and it's very far from a John Carpenter film that he used to direct. You know, his classics considered like The Thing, Halloween. It's nowhere near the level of them films. But it's still enjoyable from what I remember. I'm looking forward to watching this again and giving it a rewatch just to see what I think of it now. But Ice Cube and then Jason Statham, Natasha Henstridge from Speeches and stuff. That's a cast that I can get along with. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to giving this one another go. I may, I may do a John Carpenter series at some point on this channel, reviewing all his films. I don't know yet. Maybe if that's something you'd like to see, let me know. Next up, we have another 2 for 15 deal, and this is on HMV Premiums. And I'm very, very excited to be checking this first one out more than anything, and that is Scarface. I was really going to buy this on, day, on the day it came out. I think it was going for like £30 when they released it, but this was in the 215 for 15 deal, so I'm kind of glad I waited. And it stars Paul Lenny as... His name's not Tony Montana in this, it's something else. Tony Camote, Camonte, I think his name is. And uh, it's basically the story of Scarface by the look of things. Uh, Scarface is one of the movies that I've watched more than any other. Uh, so... I could probably relate to this original in a in a big way if it's anything like that one, which I think it might be. Um, Nineteen thirty two movie, I think one of the oldest films I own in this collection. Now I love that work, that cover art. I really do. I just think it's awesome. Very very vintage feel. Uh, there's the back really, but it's all in black and white by the look of it. Um, really really can't wait to. This is the one out of all these I bought that I think I want to watch the most. Uh, but like I said, it might be early next year to check this out. But I know there's a Scarface remake coming. Uh, I watched, I think it's from the director of Bones and All, which I just watched, which wasn't a bad film at all. And he's made some other good movies, so I really am looking forward to checking that out. Maybe I'll review this, Scarface and the new one, when that comes out, all on the channel at the same time, and give them a little ranking or something. But can't wait to check this one out. Glad to, really glad to own up and after that one for a while. And believe it or not, we have another original here that was remade, and remake is considered to be the better version, I think, from a guy we were talking about before, John Carpenter. But this is the original, and that is the thing from another world. Um, I've heard this is a really, really good. I think it's fifties movie. I think it's the fifties. Uh. It's really good. My cousin, Michael, who I work with every day, he said he, he enjoys this. Um, so looking forward to checking it out. And these are both Howard Hawks productions. Howard Hawks directed this, but produced both of these, which is another bit of a coincidence here. Um, I remember in the original Halloween, where Lindsay is watching the horror movies and this comes on. And I used to think it was John Carpenter's The Thing, but obviously when you grow up, you realise he hadn't even made that movie yet. So he was a fan of this because... It's well known, plus it was in the original Halloween, and uh, he remade it. So, but yeah, looking forward to checking them two originals out. Next up, we have a Blu-ray here. This is a film I want to check out for a while. I've heard it's really worth watching just for the ending, but I don't. that's all I know about it, and that is St. Maud. I think this is an A24 film, which is a label I will always watch. I think it's A24, um, but I heard it's a, one of the best horrors from the last few years. I've also heard a lot of people say it's, it's shit. <laughs> but I kind of heard that with Midsummer and Hereditary, and I gravitated towards really liking them. So I don't know if that's in the same type of vein, but it sounds like an interesting movie. A sick woman is visited by the nurse, and there's something about the nurse. That's all I know. Uh, looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, modern horror. I think, I think horror has come a long way lately, to be honest. And uh, 
hopefully that'll be one of the better ones and lastly we just have a video game i'm going to show right at the end here and that is god of war ragnarok which has took up a hell of a lot of my time this month still playing it now i think i'm only about halfway through the game because i've been doing all the side quests and stuff but it's it's a fantastic game uh, if you've got a ps5 definitely worth a go definitely worth a go the action just feels very very fluent and the puzzles are great characters are awesome graphics are amazing stories great you know i can't say too much bad about it so that is god of war ragnarok on the ps5 so guys i hope you all enjoyed this little blu-ray and 4k update uh, what did you think of these movies let me know down below are they good pickups you think are they bad let me know now next year i don't think i'll be doing a full blu-ray collection because i don't want this year but i think i'm going to go into next year with an entire horror collection again i'm looking forward to doing that video because the last one done really well and i haven't done one since 2021 so that'll be two years so next year i will do early on i'm looking to do it a full horror collection and a 4k collection so look out for them and the year after i'll do another blu-ray collection update i just feel like it's a bit too early to do a entire collection uh, but if you want more of these blu-ray and 4k pickups they will be down below along with my top 10 tv shows of all time when i talked about friends there so thanks so much guys take it all easy i'll see you all next video